French cuisine isn't typically influenced by American sandwiches, and yet the piece de resistance at Bon Appetit Creperie relies on a lunchbox staple as its inspiration. When we created the menu, we wanted to have some item that everybody could enjoy. We thought about pb &J. Let's try it on a crepe. And it was really good. Shea Schlu, everyone just calls her Mimi, owns the creperie tucked into Boston Public Market. The crepe is like a thin pancake. You can have it savory or sweet. Mimi immigrated to the United States in 2012 from Mali in West Africa, where food has a decidedly French influence. Being colonized by French people, so we there back home. We grew up eating crepes for dinner or lunch, snack. She says standard school lunches in her native country were typically savory. Peanut butter and jelly, not on the menu. No, that's why when, when I came the first time, I said, what? Peanut butter and jelly on a bread? Because we have peanut butter, but for, we make it with a stew, with meat and rice. It's really good, too. <laughs> so I was surprised. The PB&J isn't the only childhood throwback on Bon Appetit's crepe menu. This is for the chocolate lovers. A delicate blend of Nutella, graham crackers, and marshmallows produces the campfire. While the sweet treats are popular, Mimi says savory crepes are the draw for the lunch crowd looking for a flavorful alternative to a standard sandwich. A chicken Mediterranean, marinated chicken with the sesame sauce, cilantro, you have meat. So it's like an explosion of uh, flavor in your mouth when you eat it. People love it. Like the PB&J, a grilled cheese is a cafeteria classic. And like our childhood stories, a bit of embellishment transforms the white bread into something slightly more interesting. I think people in our generation that grew up on your traditional white bread American cheese grilled cheese are wanting to find that like adult version of the same thing. At Brighton's Brato Brew House and Kitchen, elevated grilled cheese sandwiches are house specialties. Everyone can relate to it and something they're familiar with from their childhood, but it also can be intellectually stimulating and really uh, satisfying with the beer. Owner John Gilman deviates from standard bread to his own creation, Fabrato's grilled cheese sandwiches. Our bread is made in-house from beer grain, it's fermented overnight, we don't use any commercial yeast, it's all sort of done with a sourdough starter that's from 1680. It's been replenished since that point and until now. You may have guessed that cheese does not play second fiddle to the bread at Brado, a far cry from the neon orange processed product we might remember from school. We always stock a Vermont cheddar pimento. Pimento cheese is a blend of cheddar. It's got some roasted bell peppers, tarragon, and spices. My personal favorite is the Gruyere and caramelized onion. We're sort of mimicking that crouton that you would find on the top of a French onion soup. Right now we're featuring a spinach artichoke style grilled cheese and also a wildflower honey and brie grilled cheese. And if choosing one grilled cheese flavor is impossible, fair not. Brano actually rewards indecision by offering grilled cheese flights. You basically get a quarter of each of the four grilled cheeses I just mentioned in the same plate, and you get to try all four. So if you're undecided, the grilled cheese flight's definitely the way to go. Speaking of sandwiches, how about a grown-up version of the old school chicken sandwich. It's comforting, it's tasty, it's approachable. Chris Parsons, owner of Lily Pea's Fried Chicken and Oysters in Cambridge, recommends the Lily Pea name after his daughter. We use a brined boneless chicken thigh, then we dip it twice in flour with some buttermilk as well, pressure fry that, and then we have an array of sandwiches that go on a, like a pineapple bread, like a Hawaiian roll. The Lily Pea signature sandwich is topped with a flavorful chutney called chow chow and pimento cheese, far cry from cafeteria chicken patty. Well, they're pretty good too though. <laughs> but ours is definitely different than that. While we're indulging throwback cravings, Lily Pea's dishes out a refined version of handy snacks, minus the red stick, Pimento cheese replaces the <clears throat> cheddar from the old days, but wait, there's more, chocolate pudding. I make it from scratch, it's just cream, eggs, chocolate, and it, cook it slowly over the stove, let it set, and there you go. And finally, Parson says, reminding us of when we were kids, 
eat your vegetables. Crispy broccoli, crispy Brussels sprouts. I wanted to kind of stray away from some of the heavy, more traditional sides. Just tasty, tasty stuff. Mm. Wow, and Lily Peas has a lot going on. They opened a beer garden, and tomorrow night they're hosting a bluegrass bluegrass review. Apparently, Chris Parsons loves bluegrass, and he plays the banjo. Nice, and back to Brado Brew House. Uh, they are a food vendor on Spectacle Island, actually, in Boston Harbor. They serve up tacos, burritos, beer, and wine. They'll be serving out there through September. Spectacle Island, a good take if you've never been out there. All right.